Today I want to make a video talking about those changes, both individually and how they affect the season cumulatively. So I'm going to dive right in. The first change, tank nerfs. Blizzard has announced that they will be doing significant nerfs to tanking coming into the War Within. These nerfs are significant because there are large departure to how tanks have been most of Dragonflight and even some of Shadowlands. You see, Shadowlands attempted to nerf tanks too at the start, but like they spent pretty much all of Shadowlands and all of Dragonflight rolling back those nerfs because tank survivability was an issue. So here we go again. Let's see if it goes differently this time. They're trying to do it a little bit more tactfully, but the problem with this and why it's significant is they didn't test this at all most of the beta. They waited until the end of beta to implement this, you know, after the raid testing, after most dungeon testing. Now there's still some raid testing going. They tested three bosses and they're done doing some limited dungeon testing, but the amount of people testing now is much lower than it was earlier beta because now people are in that mentality that they're, they're trying to prepare for the actual launch and they're doing like, last minute things you know they're not really as active on beta as they once were but anyways to talk about the tank changes the biggest changes here is a significant nerf to sustain self-healing they want tanks to be less able to take care of themselves and a little bit more reliant on the healer healing them why that's significant is because most mythic plus dungeons particularly are already demanding of the healer. They're busy healing the group through several mechanics that are either heavy AoE or just heavy near one-shot abilities directed at DPS. So to have to divert a little bit of that healing towards the tank when they used to not have to worry about it as much is going to change the meta up. And with limited testing of this, we're basically going to be entering Season 1 as active beta testers. Even Blizzard admits that it's going to take some iteration to get right. They literally put it right here in the post. It's going to take some testing and iteration to get it perfect. So pretty much, in Blizzard's own words, do not expect it to be perfect on the launch of Season 1, because it won't be. We are all guinea pigs in this experiment, and we're going into it together. So that's pretty much the first thing going in to season one. The next thing, on top of the tank changes, they're nerfing the stop meta. Now what is the stop meta? Well the stop meta is when you use abilities other than interrupts to break spell casting, such as death grips, knockbacks, stuns, these abilities were very strong in Mythic Plus because the way Mythic Plus has been coded the last two or three years is that all spells went on cooldown on cast start. Which means that no matter what you use to stop the cast, the spell is on cooldown into the next cast. However, with the War Within, they're, ba they're backing out of this. They're making it now to where if you don't use a hard interrupt, the spell does not go on cooldown. They're switching to a design philosophy to where CCing a mob is not acting as a stop anymore. Now it's at most a delay. See, without that spell flag, if that cast does not finish or get hard interrupted by an actual ability that's flagged as an interrupt, that spell is immediately recast as soon as a stop ends. So say you use Shockwave. That mob is stunned for four seconds. When those four seconds end, whatever you stopped with that stun is immediately cast again because it never went on cooldown. It only goes on cooldown if the cast finishes or it's kicked, period. So this will be a significant change to the way dungeons are done because it's going to put more emphasis on hard interrupts and less emphasis on bringing classes that could just rotate through stuns like a prot warrior with Stormbolt and Shockwave and Shield Charge. You know, three different spells that could all stop a spell in your dragonflight 
but none of them are going to stop that spell for more than a couple seconds in the War Within. So that means the warrior went from having four interrupts to one. That is significant. More significant than other people are making out to be. And I'll get into why this is significant when I'm recapping all three. But I want to go into the next point now, which is... Ten keys are now always harder. What does that mean exactly? Well, in the War Within, a ten key and above is always tyrannical and always fortified. But what does that mean by it's always harder then? Well, one thing about the way it works in Dragonflight is they always rotate, which means you're either dealing with hard bosses or hard trash. So you plan your comp or even your strategy around one or the other. But in the War Within, at least on a 10 plus, you have to plan for both at all times. That means there is no week where the trash is easier and the bosses are harder, or the other way around. The trash is harder, but the bosses are easier. Now, you have to build a spec and build a team that can handle both at all times. You know, fortified weak in Dragonflight means you optimize for AoE because trash matter matters more, and the bosses will fall over. And then when it's boss weak, trash is a joke. So it's like, you plan for that. But when you have to plan for both being hard at all times, it means your strategy hinges on maximizing for both, which is going to be tweaks to specs. So these are the three points together. Why is it significant and why did I pick these three specific points? Because cumulatively, they're all additive to the same effect. Trash is going to be significantly harder, particularly. You have weaker tanks that need more direct heals from the healer. You have less spells you can stop, which means more damage for the healer. You have the keys always fortified and always tyrannical, which means more damage for the healer. You see where I'm going with this. This is going to be the hardest season that healers have had to face in a long time. And tanks, I don't think that impact is going to be as felt by tanks. Like, early season particularly, they're going to have to pull a little bit more conser conservatively. And they're going to have to get used to not being able to, you know, s superman these pulls that they used to. But really, the burden is not placed on them so much as the healer. These, cumulatively, are putting a huge impact and strain on healers, which are already a role that's difficult to get skilled in in Mythic Plus. The pug scene is going to be in shambles over this. I'm telling you now, pugging Mythic Plus in Season 1 is going to be a shit show. And I'm going to have my popcorn ready. Let's just have to do so many tuning passes on this. It's not even funny because I don't even think Blizzard has considered what all three of these combined means. Like they've looked at the tank nerfs individually. They've looked at the stop meta individually and they've looked at the fortified tyrannical individually. But when you put them all together, that healer is looking at this and going, fuck. That's all I could say about that. So how are we going to deal with this as players? Well, the tanks are going to have to be most efficient at managing their cooldowns where they need them and really choosing their pull, pulls more carefully. The DPS, healers, and tanks are all going to have to maximize the most important spells to interrupt, which means maximizing your UI to show important spells over less important spells and game knowledge to know where do you use interrupts and where do you use stops? Because Blizzard said stops will sometimes work, just not as often. So now, the early season is going to be massive beta testing and learning, gaining this knowledge. And even now, people are in the beta trying to gain this knowledge. And they're building player profiles like Quasi. 
He's already got a player profile out you should check out. And I'm investigating this too to try to optimize my mods, Deadly Boss mods. I'm releasing updates now to help with the stop meta considerably with my nameplate cooldown timers, which at the end of the video, I'm going to post a link to so you can get that and it will help you the most. And number three, you just have to... That one you can't plan as much around. It's just... It is what it is. It's just going to come down to optimizing one and two. So, anyways, that's all I had to talk about this topic for now. I hope you enjoyed it. And I do hope you check out my nameplate timers because they will really, really help with this. I'm going to put a lot of time and effort into this and a lot of research so you don't have to. And all you got to do is click on the video right over here. Thank you for watching, and please, please subscribe for more videos like this in the future. It really helps me out in growing this channel and getting great updates to all of you. Thank you for watching.